Hello friends, this is Shubhendu from Geeksnipper.com and today we are going to take a detailed look at the TP-Link uh, TPWR841N wireless router. Uh, and if you are in the market for a wireless router, we highly recommend you that you get this one because it's not just available, uh, affordable but it's also one of the best performing uh, wireless routers that we have uh, reviewed so far. And uh, let's dive in right okay in. although we uh, this is not an unboxing video we're still go going to show it, uh, take a look at what we get ra right out of the box uh, as you can see this is a mm, the what the original packaging came with it's a green peeling box regular nothing out of the ordinary and uh, once you open the box the first thing you get is a cardboard box uh, this is the modem here and you see you get a CD you get some manuals and some documents regarding the warranty uh, you also get a, a Ethernet cable as well as the antennas uh, that's about all that comes with the box uh, see uh, the CD which you get uh, inside the box is not that necessary because all the settings that you require to set up your modem is already um, it can be really uh, easily accessed by uh, using the website dplinklogin.net and we are going to t take a look at how this uh, uh, how this is done so keep watching okay now let's take a look at the unit itself as you can see it uh, comes in a beautiful white color with uh, certain grooves uh, cut into the design these uh, grooves are not just for making the uh, unit look good but they serve a very important purpose that is uh, they help in dissipating the heat that is generated uh, when the modem is uh, operated as you can see uh, generally the wi-fi modems they tend to be used 24 uh, 7 they are um, on so there is a lot of heat generated and this has to be dissipated uh, is quickly for them uh, to prevent any damage to the unit okay so and as you can see there are certain uh, indicator LED lights which glow up when the unit has uh, is uh, connected to the power supply this include the Wi-Fi on off the number of uh, uh, devices that are connected etc at the back of the unit you can see this is uh, here is the power button this is the uh, input jack uh, for the power uh, cable and these are two small buttons for first is for uh, switching on and off the Wi-Fi and the second one is for resetting the device and these four yellow uh, jacks are for the um, LAN connections you can simultaneously connect four uh, PCs to this uh, single uh, wireless modem this here is one, one which comes from your um, ISP that is the DSL connection <coughs> and these antennas these are 5 dvi antennas and uh, they are supposed to uh, spread the wi-fi signal to uh, across a large distance but uh, during our testing we found that beyond uh, 15 to 20 meters the uh, strength of the wi-fi signal deteriorates significantly and if you are uh, wishing to uh, wish to uh, operate this on uh, say if you have a, if your house is of three uh, three story high uh, and this uh, router is placed on the f um, uh, on the first floor then uh, you can expect to receive the Wi-Fi signal um, on the ground floor and on the second floor uh, but the uh, uh, signal quality will uh, it will uh, deteriorate as uh, when you go start going far away from the modem also uh, during our actual testing we found that if we <coughs> Um, uh, stay too far away from the modem the, uh, it, the connection broke off after uh, we crossed 20 meters so just keep that in mind if you are in the market for a, uh, a wireless modem if you have a large house then this is going to be a problem yeah. so in that regard we re recommend that you get a modem with uh, say at least three antennas with uh, more or switch swap these antennas for uh, probably ones with more um, uh, more wi uh, string uh, signal strength Okay, so here we are on the rooftop to take a look at the uh, uh, connection which is uh, provided. So, as you can see, this is the uh, receiver which has been installed on that uh, on my rooftop, and uh, the ISP which I am using is called Tikona Digital Networks, and this works on a um, line of sight model in which uh, a receiver uh, is uh, installed on top of your roof and this is in direct line of sight with another uh, transmitter which is uh, placed on the rooftop of another building in a neighborhood 
so this is basically the where my connection starts and as you can see our ethernet cable or rj45 cable is running down from the modem running across the length of my roof and going into the modem that has been provided by my sp so uh, in the next part we are going to see how uh, this connection is uh, routed into my uh, modem which is the tp link okay so we are back from the rooftop and here we take a look at the modem which is provided by the isp uh, it comprises of uh, a small box which uh, kind of looks like a distributor box uh, it, it has one connection for the uh, uh, power adapter one, this poe is the one which comes from the receiver that is placed on the rooftop and this lan cable is the one which plugs directly into my wi-fi modem as we are going to see just now and uh, this is the entire setup and uh, see if you are going to use the uh, connection without the using the uh, Wi-Fi modem then this LAN cable is directly going to plug into your computer so uh, but th that's uh, an another ma matter altogether so let's take a look at the uh, Wi-Fi connection and, okay. uh, now we're going to take a look at how to set up the modem firstly uh, we are going to connect uh, see that we have already made the connections uh, this here is for the power jack uh, this one is the one which comes from the modem which is uh, so supplied by the ISP and this one is the one which goes directly into the PC which you, uh, which has the direct connection. Uh, you have provision for uh, four PCs to be connected simultaneously to the device but I have connected uh, to hooked up to one and uh, let's turn on the power. As you can see immediately the LEDs which are on top of the unit they will uh, start glowing and you have to wait for a while as you can see the Wi-Fi wi just came on and the device is connecting this process takes about uh, 30 seconds to a minute to set up uh, properly after which you can get access to your uh, Wi-Fi connection Okay, in this section we are going to take a look at the various features of our wireless modem. So as you know it is already uh, compliant with the IEEE 802.11n standard uh, which makes it liable for spe uh, access speeds of up to 300 Mbps. Uh, but in our present scenario we have tested it with a connection of 4 Mbps and we have received a significantly good performance. And when you have a connection of over 2 Mbps uh, you can easily watch HD videos, uh, share photos, uh, listen to online music without uh, having to need for uh, buffering, uh, take part in online gaming, file transfer, downloads, etc. Uh, but you have to keep in mind if your ISP is provi providing you with a stable and uh, decent connection, uh, you can uh, enjoy the uh, internet properly and basically it's uh, useless to blame the Wi-Fi modem if your uh, ISP is not providing you with a good service. So now let's take a look at the advanced security features of the uh, wireless modem. As you know it has already uh, got a WPS or Wi-Fi protected system which is a one button security system. Uh, according to this if you uh, have a system which wants to connect to the Wi-Fi network you can basically do this without the need of a password. Uh, for this you have to uh, press the button uh, Wi-Fi button of the modem whenever a mod device is trying to connect and by doing this you eliminate the need for a password and uh, this makes the entire uh, process much more safe and secure because uh, only persons who have access to the Wi-Fi modem can get, uh, get connected to the internet uh, so we thought this was a very good move uh, okay now uh, this is the IP QoS or quality of service uh, controlled bandwidth allocation feature so as you can see that uh, basically if you have a connection where multiple parties are using the same um, uh, Wi-Fi connection the, in order to prevent uh, an unfair bandwidth allocation we have we can basically allot uh, the amount of bandwidth every single party is going to use so uh, depending on the number of machines you can control the amount of bandwidth which every single uh, device is going to use which is a, another good feature to have also, uh, setting up the Wi-Fi modem is uh, fairly easy because there are two methods as per the um, instruction booklet, which is first uh, uses the CD method, 
and the second one which uses the online method we are going to take a look at the uh, detail about the online method in this tutorial so let's get okay, to it in this section we are going to set up our wi-fi connection uh, firstly you have to open the network settings and uh, turn on wi-fi and as you can see uh, i am already connected to the wi-fi as the um, uh, said network has already been set up so but in this scenario uh, before you set it up you will see the name as tp link with the relevant model number and you will be asked to connect to the uh, connect to this uh, network after you connect to it you will be uh, either asked for a password or you will have to press the uh, um, wi-fi button on the back of the panel of the wi-fi modem uh, in order to connect to the internet so after you do so you will be authenticated and you will get access now after you do so uh, open up a new browser page and write tp link login dot net which is tp link login dot net here is the tp link login page uh, as soon as you open the page uh, you might be accosted with a dialog box which asks you for a uh, password and uh, login and password uh, just remember the login and password for this uh, uh, site is admin admin a d m i n a d m i n and uh, you can see the status over here we are using a dynamic ip system and the ip address is uh, changing every few minutes and as you can see since you are connected the some amount of bytes have been sent and received but if you are uh, running a fresh connection the first thing you have to do is click on quick setup here next next on this page uh, first thing you have to do is give your name to your connection we have named it tikona and uh, you have to set up a password or you can choose uh, not to have a password the advanced settings over in this section are best left at default and click on next see that's this is all you have to do click on finish button and you will be directed to the status page uh, once again a quick way to che check if you are uh, connected to the internet or not is by using this method uh, on your keyboard uh, uh, press start button plus r to open the run dialog box on this dialog box write ping ping space the ip address uh, of the uh, ip address which your isp uh, will be providing for uh, ping uh, in order to ping or to check uh, uh, whether you are uh, um, check the status of your uh, connection for uh, in our present scenario it is 10.23.64.1 minus t uh, this is uh, going to uh, differ from ISPS to ISP as well as uh, differ from location to location. As you can see, it is given the status of the um, <coughs> uh, connection, and since the pings are being responded to, uh, we know that the connection is active. If you are getting a, uh, so any other type of uh, dialog, uh, dialog, such as um, general failure or destination non reachable, then you know that the status of your uh, connection is uh, fair. Uh, is uh, has some problem and you have to contact your isp immediately in order to resolve the situation okay now after this is finished uh, after you connect to the internet you have to uh, you will either be directed automatically or you have to uh, open the login page of your uh, isp in this case we have the number is 1.254.254.254 and this is going to differ from isp to isp See, we will be directed uh, directly to the login page. Okay. Now, all we have to do is uh, you put in the user ID and password that has been provided by the ISP, and immediately we will be getting access to our internet connection. So we have logged in and we are connected to the internet. So this brings and uh, brings us to the end of the review. For more news, reviews and tutorials, uh, check back at geeksnipper.com. Uh,
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग